All right, welcome everybody. Peter Draws here. It may come as a shock to you, or it probably shouldn't, but today I have the urge to draw a spaceship, okay? And I could draw my inspiration, um, TV shows and movies and other drawings, and even the spaceships I've seen in real life, because we actually do have those, which is crazy to think about. Why don't we call this the space shuttle? Why don't we call that a spaceship? You know, that would be cool. Anyways, I could just start. There are a lot of spaceship ideas bouncing around in my head, but today I'm going to use this website right here. It's this website I found out about like, uh, it's called Seventh Sanctum. I found out about like 15 years ago and like every three years I remember it and have all these generators, okay? This one here, this is where we're going to find out our ship's name, okay? And uh, like, here's a bunch of examples. I'm gonna knock it down to one name possibility. I'm gonna click generate more names. And here's here's our ship name, okay? The Wondrous Torque. Wondrous, the Wondrous Torque. Okay, that's just, you just gotta roll with what you get. All right, over here is gonna be our spaceship type generator. One type, roll the dice. A far range orbital light colony investigator. Okay, okay. The wondrous torque, which is a far range orbital light colony investigator. And then we need sh we should we should um uh, generate the name of our captain. Um all categories. Generate life story. Uh I may or may not run with the life story. Avoid rare. Avoid diminutives. Diminutives. I don't know what that means. Um, all right. Rosabella Sophie. Who? <laughs> apparently Rosabella Sophie, uh, apparently Rosabella Sophie is a toddler, but she's one year old and she's successful for her age. She's the captain of a Far range orbital light colony investigator, the wondrous torque. Okay. And I'm happy for her. All right. So the image is building in my mind. A colony investigator piloted, captained by a toddler that the urge to draw is, is ballooning up inside of me. Right over here, we have um, a cyberware generator. Maybe this is uh, maybe there's some technology that's on board. A visualization magnetizer. Maybe I'll add one of those onto the ship. Okay, that's good to know. And over here we'll have a science fiction tool generator. Oops, put it down to one. We're gonna have a gravity adaptable file. Maybe there'll be one on the ship, or maybe we'll be hauling a whole hold, a cargo of these. A gravity adaptable file. And then over here, uh, an electronic gear bra. Okay, and then maybe this is this ship is more of a like a, it's dealing in commodities. Maybe to start a light colony, you've got to have the essentials. I think that's what I'm realizing. Okay, and then we need to know uh, what kind of pizza the the uh, cafeteria on board has. Sounds like it has a pizza with butternut squash, potatoes, almonds, ham, and egg. It's going to be a long voyage, folks. It's going to be a very long voyage with this kind of pizza. Not even any pineapple. That could have been the one saving grace. Anyways, let's let's recap. Let's start drawing. We have here a our far range orbital light colony investigator called the wondrous torque captained by one year old super successful rosabella sophie toddler extraordinaire right-handed blood type o positive she's 23 pounds 2 feet 5 inches tall she can barely reach the controls but she doesn't need to she she delegates. Other people reach the controls for her. 
On board, we have a visualization magnetizer. We're geared out with all the latest uh, technology, clearly. And we have a gravity adaptable file and at least one electronic gear bra. And a pizza with butternut squash, potatoes, almonds, ham, and egg can be found in the cafeteria on board. So I think we're ready to go. Now, one thing I think I need to address before we get too far into this, something I think I'm probably legally obliged to disclose, um, probably both by YouTube's rules and, you know, according to state and federal rules, and probably according to intergalactic laws, that I am only an amateur. Uh, I'm only an, uh, like a hobbyist spaceship architect, okay? Um... I'm not certified, and any accreditation, accreditations that I may have had in the past have since l I've let them lapse. Okay, so um, everything I have here, don't try it at home in your shipyards in the backyard that you might have. Okay, these are not necessarily safe. Um, you know, it's not necessarily a, 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 a space-worthy design, if you know what I'm saying. Um, there, the, the place, if you're watching this on Earth or pretty much anywhere um, in the western spiral arm of the galaxy of the Milky Way, um, we have stricter laws here as far as um, what can and cannot be built, um, you know, and certified by various shipyards. But what I found interesting is if you get a little bit farther from home, or what I call home, oh, look at this. Have you ever done that thing like where a kid draws a picture like with a crayon just like a random you know like five ten year old drawing and then like a more like an adult or some other artist takes that kind of sloppy drawing and recreates it renders it more expertly into a very like a more polished uh complete and you know maybe more expertly done drawing like some weird looking monster with like six legs and an eye and it's just like a blob and then another artist comes along, takes it and polishes it up. There are shipyards you can go to, is what I'm saying, very far away, light years, very far away, uh, and you can pretty much take them, uh, any sort of drawing or plan you have. Like I could take them this drawing and they would find a way to flesh it out and make it into a real spaceship, which I think is very exciting. No one would um, even consider doing that here because of all the liability, uh, all the liabilities, and you know, um, all the the rules and stuff they have here. But there are there are ways to do it out in the, you know, the the dark, dank uh, alleys of the galaxy, and it's harder to get there, and it might cost a little more. Just because, actually some places it costs way less, but also, well, it could cost your life, I guess. That's the, the, the price you would pay. Anyways, also a big thing I want to discuss here is the, the school of thought about general spaceship design as far as the shape goes, right? Um, this spaceship I'm designing here, this colony investigator, is not intended to ever interact with the atmospheres of planets. No planetary atmospheric interaction designed or intended at all. So with that in mind, um, it really doesn't need to be long and skinny, as the tradition goes, right? It doesn't need to be shaped like an airplane. It doesn't need to be shaped like a bird or a dart or a hot dog or anything like that. Really, it could be shaped like a cube, or it could be it could be shaped like a like a wall that just flies through space because it's in a vacuum, right? So, really, I feel like if we were going to make the ideal shape for a spaceship that just flies through space, and um, if you want to be able to get from one area to another most conveniently, and everything would be as close to each other as possible, uh, I think we could agree that the most convenient shape for any given spaceship that would never interact with any sort of atmosphere would have to be a sphere, right? There's not a lot of good reasons to have any shape besides a sphere, 
unless you're, there are certain things you want to keep farther away from other things, maybe volatile substances, maybe prisoners, right? There are always um, exceptions. Um, also, I have a tendency to, to want to install tall antennas on my spaceships, but also there's not a good reason to put tall antennas on my spaceships, I don't think, because I could be totally wrong about this because I have no real research done into this subject. I feel like the reason, one, one of the main reasons we put tall antennas um, on planets is because a lot of the radio signals work based off of a uh, line of sight, like the fact that they can't, you know, the radio signals can't go through the planet, they can't go through uh, the Earth, right? So we put them as far up off the ground as possible so that they can go over the surface of the Earth. So that's why we have like a radio antenna, you know, going up off, the, off, off of our vehicles. We have tall antennas on towers and stuff. Um, but then again, there's also the idea that some radio waves bounce between the surface of the Earth and the atmosphere. And so maybe, you know, sometimes the radio waves depend on the length of the antenna itself. In that case, you could just use the whole length of the ship as the antenna, right? And then in that case, you would maybe want to have a long antenna sticking out in one direction or maybe both directions to increase the length of your antenna. So there's some, there's some considerations that could be done there because maybe it would help when, uh, you know, communicating over the vast distances, the vast emptiness of space, you know, multiple hundreds, even, even these days, you can see here, the range of this ship is 700,000 light years with its hypospace boosters that can do this in almost no time at all. I mean, comparatively to what it used to be, um, used to be not even we could consider covering distances like those like used to be alpha alpha centauri you know just mere like three or four light years away that was insurmountable anyways but we're, we're trying to communicate over these sort of distances it helps to have these super long antennas and sometimes we pull antennas behind us like like submarines used to do in the ocean that helps too. Anyways, um, thanks for watching. Uh, if you have any questions, I've labeled everything here. I came up with the rest of the labels myself. If you if you want to label things like this and you can't think of any labels, uh, you can you can always use the generator like I used to come up with a couple of the things. Um, I'll I'll link that website down there below if you want to. I mean, it's fun just using like generators like that can help you come up with fun ideas sometimes. Kind of jumpstart you if you can't think of anything to do. A little brainstorming sort of sort of brainstorming session or something like that. Anyways. All right. See you later. All right. Bye.